Chapter 16, The Blackberry Bush. Nature finds a way to create life everywhere. In a smelly alleyway that connected the road to Zoe's estate, among all the crisp wrappers and empty beer cans, stood a proud little blackberry bush. Zoe loved the blackberries. They were like free sweets. She was pretty sure Armitage would like them too. She picked a large one for herself and a little one for her furry friend. Carefully, she placed the baby rat onto the wall. As Armitage watched, Zoe put the blackberry into her mouth and started chewing enthusiastically and making appreciative noises. Then she took the smaller blackberry between her thumb and forefinger and held it out towards him. Armitage must have been hungry because slowly he stood upon his hind legs to greet it. Zoe was delighted. The rat took the blackberry between his front paws and nibbled it greedily. It was gone in seconds. Soon he was looking longingly up at Zoe for another one. She picked another off the bush and held it up just above his nose. Without hesitation, Armitage stood upon his hind legs again. Zoe moved the blackberry around and he followed it around on his back legs. It was as if he was doing a little dance. What a talented fellow you are, said Zoe as she gave him the blackberry. Once again, he ate it greedily and Zoe stroked the back of his neck. Good boy! Inside, she was buzzing with excitement. Armitage could be trained. Better still, it was like he wanted to be. He got the idea of standing up even quicker than Ginger Knot had. Soon Zoe was plucking as many blackberries as she could off the bush. Just as she had with her hamster, she began teaching Armitage some tricks. There was the walk, the jump, the hop on one leg, the wave, the dance. Soon the bush was bare and Armitage looked rather stuffed and tired. Zoe knew it was time to stop. She whisked him up in her arms and gave him a kiss on his nose. You are amazing, Armitage. That's what I will call you when we perform together on stage. The amazing Armitage. Zoe skipped down the alleyway. Her heart was dancing, as were her feet. It was only when Zoe reached her estate that the spring in her step vanished. Not only would she have to tell her stepmother that she was suspended, she'd have to come up with some explanation as to why. The whole episode would give her stepmother a reason to make Zoe's life even more of a living hell. And what was a million times worse? A reason to end the little rat's life. A life that had only just begun. As Zoe approached the great leaning tower block, she noticed something peculiar. Bert's burger van was parked right outside her towering block of flats. In the many years she had lived there since her mother died, she had never, ever seen the van there before. It was only ever parked outside her school. What on earth is that doing there, she thought. Even from a distance, the smell of fried meat was stomach churning. However hungry Zoe was, she had never bought a burger from Bert's van. The stench alone was enough to make her want to projectile vomit. The ketchup was decidedly iffy too. Passing the van, she noticed how disgustingly grimy it was. Even the dirt was dirty. Zoe ran her index finger along the chassis and a splodge of sludge an inch thick came off in her hand. Perhaps Bert had just moved into the block of flats, she thought. She hoped not though, as he was seriously creepy. Bert was the sort of man your nightmares had nightmares about. The tiny flat was high up on the 37th floor, but the lift always stank. You had to hold your breath in there, which wasn't easy over 37 floors, so Zoe would always take the stairs. Armitage was safely lying in her blazer pocket, and she could feel the weight of his tiny body bounce against her heart with every step. Her breathing grew louder and louder as she ascended the building. The stairs were littered with all kinds of rubbish from cigarette butts to empty bottles. The steps stank too, but not as much as the lift. And of course, you weren't so closed in. As usual, by the time Zoe reached the 37th floor, she was completely breathless and panting like a dog. Zoe stood outside the front door for a moment, pausing to catch her breath before she put her key in the lock. The headmaster, Mr. Grave, would no doubt have called her parents to tell them their daughter had been suspended. Within seconds, Zoe was sure to let loose her stepmother's fury, a fury no doubt more 
rabid even than the hounds of hell. Zoe silently twisted the key and reluctantly pushed the rotting door open. Even though her stepmother rarely went out, the TV was off and Zoe couldn't hear anyone in the house. So she tiptoed across the hall to her bedroom, being careful to avoid the squeakiest floorboards. She turned the door handle to her room and stepped inside. A strange man was standing in her bedroom, facing the window. Ah! So he screamed, startled. Then the man turned around. It was Bert. <laughs>